I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. The story you're about to see is the reenactment of a special mission assigned to the USS Seahorse. At this point in the war, she was a veteran submarine with a record of 19 enemy ships under her belt. However, she had never had an assignment like this one. All of her crew knew what the mission was, but only her captain, Commander Harry H. Greer, Jr., knew why. March 19, 1945, the USS Seahorse reported at Guam, which was now the advanced headquarters of the Pacific Fleet. She was fresh from an overhaul in the States and had all the latest devices. Vice Admiral Lockwood, Commander Submarine Force, came aboard to check their performance. I, um, I ask you to stay aboard for a few minutes because I wanted very much to talk to you about something in private. It's a pleasure, Harry. We'll just got the Seahorse another cup of coffee. Shoot. No. Thank you. Well, sir, now that you've witnessed the tests of the new mine detector, what do you think of it? It's a good one. Very good. Isn't this the first one you've ever seen? No. There are others. Well, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I've never seen anything so hush-hush. The civilian scientists that were installing and testing for the past couple of months wouldn't even discuss it with me. And I'm just the captain of the ship. You had training with it at Pearl Harbor on your way out. That's the first time I really knew what the black box was for. That's the way I wanted it. If you knew the weeks and months I've spent on this gear and what it means, you'd appreciate the secrecy. I do, Admiral. But to get to my point, ever since we waltzed through the dummy minefields at Pearl without touching one of them, the wheels have been going around in my head till I'm buzzing. I want your permission to try to go through the minefields at Tsushima Straits and make a patrol in the Sea of Japan. Not many men would make such a request, Harry. And I'm really sorry I can't give you the green light. It's not that I don't think it's a good idea. It's just that I've been working on one that suits our purposes better. We call it Operation Barney. Have you got a chart of the Japan Sea handy? Yes, we have one right here. Now, there's not much shipping left out here in the Pacific, thanks to you boys. But back here, in the Sea of Japan, they hardly know the war's on. They feel pretty safe behind the mine barriers that close off the only entrances from the outside. The lighthouses are burning, and ships are using running lights, just like in peacetime. It's the last open sea lane they have for supplying the home islands. Well, I, I don't understand, sir. That's the very reason I want to get in there. And you'd sink some ships, too. But think about it like this. After that, that'd make it pretty tough on anyone else who tried it. Now, my plan calls for sending nine boats through at the same time. They'd fan out to various patrol areas. And when they started shooting all at once, the Japs would know it wasn't some isolated sub that managed to squeeze in. We're trying to make them quit. And unless I miss my guess, this is going to help. I hope we're one of the nine, sir. I've got to tell you no again, Harry. You see, I can't send all those boats to a minefield without being sure, and doubly sure, that the new equipment is going to show them where the mines are and do it every time. All right, we've gone through them like a skier on the slalom. You couldn't want better results. But some of the boys haven't been so lucky. They're not ready to go yet. You are. And here's where you fit into the picture. Before we make the big attempt, it is vital that we know where the first lane of mines we'll encounter are located, at what depth they're planted, and what the distance is between them. Come on the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't interrupt anything important, did I, Ray? Well, yes and no. I just had Joe Sporer over a barrel in an AC Ducey game. Now he'll want to start all over. So whole quarter riding on it. Well, next time I beat him, I'll donate the quarter to you. 
There's something I want you to do. You know the intelligence report on the radar stations at Tsushima? Yes, sir. I have it in my safe. You plot them on the chart so we can figure our best approach? Tsushima? Floating mine on starboard bow. We better sink it. 20 millimeter gun crew on deck. 20 millimeter gun crew on deck. All stop. Bring her right slowly. All stop. Bring her right slowly. See if all that gunnery training pays off. I guess I got a little too close to that one. Looks like about 300 yards. Just about. Let's let that be a lesson to us. How's that, Captain? Think what would have happened if we'd nudged it with our bow. Seahawk continued on her course towards the minefields of Tsushima. As they approached the area, it became necessary to run submerged in daytime to avoid detection. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty tough from here on in, Ray. Stevens, take a sounding, will you? Aye, right, sir. Ninety-eight fathoms. Hmm. Bottom shoaling up fast. We could pick up our first mines any time. I don't think there's much chance till we get into about sixty fathoms. Now yeah, the way I dope it out, we'll find them right about in here tomorrow. We're going to be in range of all these radar stations when we surface for battery charges tonight. Yeah. If they have any defense in here, we'll find it out pretty soon. Maybe we ought to run out, submerged, in the afternoon before we surface and back in in the morning. Well, we'd spend most of our time going back and forth. We'd never get the job done that way. We may have to fight to stay in here, but we're going to stay. Hey, Joe. Did you work over that deck gun last night? Yes, sir. Lucky we did, too. Salt water was getting to it. Almost had it frozen. Is it okay now? I say she's ready, willing, and able. Well, it's five minutes before sunset. Let's go up and take a look around before we surface. I know you've just had a look, but I'm one of those guys that always presses an elevator button no matter how many people are around. I'll just take a look for myself. Let's go. Surface! All right. All ballast tank. All clear to port. Very well. Say, Vega, since when did you become a lookout? Well, Captain told me this morning to put him on. Something about he can see better at night than the rest of us. Yeah, I read something about these country boys being good possum hunters. Since this being your first watch, there's some important things I want to tell you. Now, keep the strap around you so you don't drop the binoculars. And don't let them get wet. Now, being a lookout is a very important job. You're going to be responsible for this $10 million submarine and maybe the success of the whole mission. And more important than that are the lives of about 90 of your shipmates. You understand that, don't you? Well, there's something more important that you didn't mention, sir. What's that, Vega? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> 
All clear on the radar. Look out to the bridge. Start low pressure blowers. Commence battery charge on two main engines. All right, up you go. And remember, my wife and kids are dependent on you, too. Put the low pressure blower in all main ballast tanks. This was a well-guarded area. Enemy radar had soon detected the seahorse, and news of her presence was transmitted immediately. Air patrols headed in her direction. Airplane on the radar, he's coming in. Clear the bridge, clear the bridge! Dive, dive! <laughs> stayed right in there. He had a minefield to chart. Bearing on Tetrasaki, mark. Zero, four, nine, down scope. Good fix, Captain. Mine dead ahead. Right, full rudder. Right, full rudder. On your course. Steady, course zero five zero. It's going by a beam now. Hot it in, Ray. We've entered the field. We've entered the field. There it is. A little off the port bow. We're running parallel to a line of mines. Can you give me another fix, Captain? Right. Saki, mark. Zero, one, five. Probably listening buoys as well as mines in this field. Well, that does it. Really spills the beans. How do you mean? Well, won't this wise them up to our whole plan? Not necessarily. They'll probably figure that some dope stumbled into their minefield by mistake. Anyway, he's not going to stop us now. Take stations for gun action. Take stations for gun action. Service.
after polishing off the patrol boat, the Seahorse went back to her spine-tingling job, right on the enemy's front doorstep. For days, they kept at it until they had a comprehensive plot of the first line of mines. I wasn't so beat, I'd feel awful good about now. All the dope in the bag and heading for the barn. I won't be able to relax until I can get the information back to the Admiral. Sure wish we could use the radio. Too many Japanese direction finders around here. They'd be on us in a flash. We're getting some heavy interference on the radar. I'll drop down and have a look at it. It's coming from back aft somewhere. Whatever radar it is, it works on the same frequency ours does. Could be the Crevalli. She's on some sort of special mission up this way. Keep an eye on it. I think it's the Crevalli, Ray. Let's wait and let him catch up. All engines, stop. All stop. Bearing on the Crevalli, 153. Range, 6,000 yards. I believe I've got him. That's not the Crevalli. It's an enemy patrol boat. All our heads, play! I'm a stupid ass. What's the range doing? It's commencing to open. Six one double O. We're out running them. Airplane coming in. Clear the bridge. Clear the bridge. We're at 300 feet, Captain. The ship is rigged for depth charge and silent running. The propellers have speeded up. The ship at the short scale pinging. Passing overhead now. Broken. I think we're on the bottom. There's a bad leak in the radio room. Repair party to the radio room. Repair party to radio room. Where is he now? I don't know, Captain. This gear's gone dead. As the hours wore on, the Japanese worked over their stranded victim. The seahorse was a shambles. The depth gauges and listening gear were broken, periscopes smashed, diving controls knocked out of line. But worst of all, her radio equipment was flooded out. She was deaf, dumb, and blind. They were deep in enemy waters, and even if they could surface, their chances of getting back with the vital information almost ceased to exist. As the afternoon wore on, the Japanese seemed to pick up a false scent. Their charges were further away. Come up here a minute. What time is moonrise? 23.47. Good. I want to surface as soon after dark as we can. That'll give us time to get away from here before the moon comes up. I hope moving away with their depth charging isn't a trick. Or they could leave a sleeper up there with his engine stopped. We'd never know it. That's a chance we'll have to take. Do you think we could dive again if we had to? Not without some repairs. 
can't even move the bow plane. As a matter of fact, Captain, we don't know whether the engines will run. All ahead, flank. No radar, we may be running right toward him, Joe. Maybe so, Captain. But this is what I'd call an improvement. Maybe we'll make it. We have to make it if the Admiral's gonna get the dope on the minefield. Maybe we better give it to him by radio as soon as we can, just to be sure. Well, that won't be too soon, Captain. I just talked to the chief radio man. He says he's got to tear the transmitter down completely. Watch all the pots of fresh water and reassemble. How long does he figure? Working around the clock, three days. Three days? The seahorse was in desperate shape. She tried to dive to escape an enemy plane, but the damaged ship went out of control and popped to the surface again. Luckily, the plane went by, but they were still deep in enemy territory. Their destruction seemed only a matter of time. If they could get their information to Admiral Lockwood, their loss would not be in vain. Hey, Thompson. Hook up that entertainment radio in the shack. We'll try to receive on it. New antennas up. Looks short, though. It is, but I think it'll be all right for our frequency. You ought to be getting pretty close to a try. A couple of hours ought to do it now. We put so many homemade parts in the transmitter, I can't promise anything. You and the skipper will keep the enemy off us till then. We'll get something out of this transmitter. I hope it isn't just a puff of smoke. I'm ready to try it now. Go ahead. Light off your transmitter. Here's the message. I hope this tub of gremlins holds together. Transmitter putting out? Yes, sir. We're calling both. Pearl Harbor and Guam. Yeah, we raised somebody. They said to go ahead with a message. Wait a minute. What's the matter? That's a Japanese. I can tell by the way he's hitting the key. He's been trying to fool me for three years. I better switch to 8400. It's Pearl Harbor. They hear us loud and clear. <laughs> we'll give them the message. Now all we have to worry about is our skin. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. The skipper of the Seahorse, Commander Harry H. Greer, is with us. But now he is Captain Greer, United States Navy. Harry, this patrol of the Seahorse is certainly a fine example of courage and tenacity. You didn't allow the enemy's best efforts to chase you out until you had the information the Admiral sent you for. Thank you. It was my first patrol as commanding officer of the Seahorse, and I was fortunate to inherit one of the finest ship's companies that was ever gathered together. They could do anything. It must be a strange feeling to go cavorting about in a minefield. Well, of course it is. Things like this always look dangerous, or even foolhardy from a distance. But we had good detection equipment, we were well trained in its use, and we had the confidence that goes with knowledge. Your survey of the Shishima minefields was a great contribution to the success of Operation Barney. We are honored to have had you here. Thank you, Tommy. Please sit in with us again when the silent service brings you another true submarine story. Take her down and up the line Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide From down, down underneath the sea Take the force for past the world In the future yet Oh, 
Underneath the sea.